As usual, I get up and stumble from the hooch. Outside, the shade of night is full of sea breezes causing me to shiver. Crack, crack, they're just hungry. Crack, can't we give them our food? Crack, not enough for both them and us. Gunny was looking for you to go out on that patrol, but you're out somewhere, so I volunteered. Had crap for a hand and my money was just about gone, so I figured, what the heck? Well, we have about seven or eight people who are always the stalwarts. And then we have three or four people who come and go. And in a writer's group, you know, 10 or 12 would be a max anyway. It's a kind of dark zen, resonant with tragedy, untold, unspoken. You can talk about it and everybody understands and you, you know, they know you're not some kind of a ghoul or something. It seems so much more. As you said, it's not a therapy session. Although it may be therapeutic um, for, 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 for some people. For this group of veterans, joined around the table at times by family members and loved ones, the once a month gatherings are a safe place, united by a bond of service. Some spent time in Iraq or Afghanistan. Others, like H.C. Palmer, have carried the scars of moral injury since Vietnam. And I've written about the bad things that I felt guilty about that I did while I was there. For me, it's been very helpful. I'm the only doctor in the group, but I'm not a psychiatrist, so we don't claim that they're going to get healed. We, we think they'll learn to negotiate their brokenness. You know, it's just better to get the, 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 the truth out there. The more stories, probably the more truth there is. Another thing Palmer isn't, a professor of literature, but he knows where to find them. The Writer's Place regularly helps the group's cause with weekend workshops like this one, called Telling Your Story. Filled with tips on writing poetry, prose, and even works for stage and screen from folks who do it for a living. You gotta take that and gonna stretch it out. You know, I think probably 80% of this group wants to write to be published, you know, to write something literary. And most of them are getting to that spot. My high school and elementary school teachers would be shocked that I'm, I'm even doing this. I wasn't known as a, a writer back then. A mustachioed Sunni. There's lots of craft to master, but perhaps nothing helps aspiring writers more than simply seeing how others respond to the words they've chosen. The Meadowland of monuments. The writer thinks he knows how it'll be received, but doesn't really know until he gets that feedback. You may think something is significant, and they'll tell you it's really a distractor and get rid of it. I found a voice by just basically grabbing a little piece of paper and writing my thoughts. But I never considered that to be anything other than just my thoughts. When Pedro Sotelo returned from tours of duty in the Middle East, PTSD accompanied him, and disability followed. Shortly after finding the writer's group, he brought a poem inspired by an event that both thrilled and perplexed him. Sotelo was chosen to throw out the first pitch at the 2014 World Series. Immediately afterwards, there was a rush of accomplishment. Uh, I guess it could be described as something that we experienced in, in combat after a particular mission, but that only lasted a second. So when I started to ride, I understood that it was beyond of just the ball game. It was how I've been feeling for a long time, feelings. Do I feel? Can I feel? The cold shiver down my spine signals the emptiness in my heart, the indifference of life born and lost. In other poems that I have written, it talks about this type of isolation. It talks about this type of being out of control, yet in total control. So looking for that particular piece, where is that? What is it? We understand it then we can tackle it, and then we can work with it. It is fast. It is quick. I am numb. Even my fingerprints are gone. <laughs>